do you remember NBA Live 95 or 97 or any NBA Live? We have the turbo button. You hold it down, and the first time you play, you just hold it down until it runs out. Then you realize that, oh, it takes forever to recover, so you know you need to uh, reserve that energy. It's easy to see that in games, and sometimes we forget to do that in life. These are book notes for The Power of Full Engagement by Jim Lore and Tony Schwartz. The book talks about, or what we'll go over, is physical energy, mental energy and self-control, and then also emotional and spiritual energy. So first is physical energy, just uh, feeling good, making sure your body feels good, and a lot of us can think that it's only mental energy that is required to do things like, I don't know, programming, writing, a lot of desk jobs. We just think, oh, okay, we just need mental energy, and we, we don't really worry about our physical health and things like that. Uh, but this book talks about how important physical energy is for mental energy and for anything that requires mental focus. One good thing about this is that we have almost, not not complete control, but we have a lot of control over our physical fitness, and we grow up learning that. We grow up in PE classes, and we don't grow up in meditation classes. It's kind of a foreign concept, uh, thinking that we have control over our mental fitness, which we do, but it's more uh, apparent when you're trying to do make changes. Uh, it's It's easier to see how you feel after doing something physical, lifting weights, going for a run, and you can pick what you eat in most cases. You know, you can, um, the problem is saying no to a lot of bad foods. I've been reading uh, Haruki Murakami's book, What I Talk About When I Talk About Running. So his job is, as a novelist, mostly writing for hours at a time, four to five hours at a time. But he knows the importance of physical fitness and running is his thing. Uh, that book is pretty much just about how he started running and started writing at around the same time. He doesn't like directly attribute his success to running or anything like that, but he does draw the parallels there where um, learning to run long distances was just... Uh, way for him to practice that kind of self-discipline he knows that it was a way to keep him grounded um, whenever he was feeling bad about going for a run he knew that he needed to be grateful that he had that kind of lifestyle where he could go for a run in the middle of the day instead of having to go commute and go to an office and sit there then um, instead of like a sports game with the turbo bar you could also think of an RPG, so you have your energy, which is always HP. And then there's also a uh, second bar often, which is usually magic. But in this case, we can think of it as mental bar, so your, mag <laughs> your mental energy. And this is important also uh, for being fully engaged in your work and in your life. A lot of times it's easy to, if this goes all the way down, then you're more likely to get very angry over something and then destroy that printer with your friend. So there are things that you can do to build the willpower, like this mental willpower. One of them is the Pomodoro technique, time blocking. And the good thing there is that it builds in this idea of rest. So when you're doing physical work, like weightlifting, recovery is such an important thing. So recovery between sets. And for runs, you have recovery recovery days. You don't run unless, you know, you build up this. But you're not running a marathon every day. So with the mental energy and uh, things like the Pomodoro technique, you practice working intensely and then taking the break. The uh, physical version of that, I guess, would be like interval sprints. Something that you can do with self-control is build a habit. Uh, you need some self-control to build a habit. So you have the cue, routine, and reward. In the case of, say, junk food, a lot of times it's like, 
oh, I have to go walk to the bathroom. I pass by the kitchen. I see some snacks. I know I shouldn't be eating it, but uh, that's the cue. I eat it, and my reward is I feel good from eating it, but then uh, down the line, I realize, oh, okay, this is not going towards my goals. So what you can do instead of trying to build your willpower is you can build your environment and build a system. So this is where you would change the reward or change the cue in the case of what I had instead of, well, I recognize the cue is going to the bathroom. Um, and then, and passing by, actually the real cue is passing by the kitchen. So I can change, I probably can't really change like, you know, I'm going to have to use the bathroom throughout the day, but I can change the kitchen environment. And instead of having the snacks out on the counter, I can keep them in the cupboard so I don't see them. Otherwise, I can also have healthy snacks out so that I change the reward in that case. Instead of, I'll still have the same cue, same routine, grab something to eat, but Instead, the reward is, I don't know, carrots, which is a terrible reward. But what comes with that is the idea that um, that I really like am focusing on my health and feeling good about that. So I talked about physical energy and mental energy, and these are two of the factors in uh, being fully engaged. And there's two more, so... Going back to those little the bars, you have the health bar, physical bar, your mental bar, and then the other two dimensions are emotional and spiritual. A key thing for keeping your emotional energy uh, in the right place is to have awareness. Recognize when you're neg in, in a negative state. And that's the first step to changing it. It takes practice, just like the other two, mental energy and physical energy. You build that up with practice, with daily training. And there is meditation for mental energy, and that's becoming more and more popular. Uh, with things like really like looking at your emotional state and fixing that deliberately, um, there's probably less so of that. And it's, it's an important thing to take care of. So don't get caught in the negativity. A rule that I like is, or not a rule, but just the saying, I guess, is that you can't be grateful and frustrated at the same time. You can't be grateful and angry at the same time. And sometimes you can't really control those moments of anger. What you can control is those moments of gratitude. Every day you can practice your gratitude. And it becomes like, uh, relating it back to fitness, there's this idea, if you want to increase uh, the number of pull-ups that you can do. There's a concept called greasing the groove. What you do is figure out like the maximum number of pull-ups you can do and then uh, cut it in half and you'll just do that throughout the day or even a quarter. So if you could do 12, uh, good for you. <laughs> I can't probably. So uh, throughout the day, you'll just do three. Uh, just at various times throughout the day, it, it'll feel like nothing. It'll feel really easy. And in the same way, uh, you can do three gratitudes at any point in the day, or even just one. Wake up, do your three gratitudes, uh, write them down, say them out loud. And then throughout the day, just take the time to think of something you're, that you're grateful for. It builds up. Uh, it makes you a more grateful person. And it makes it easier to return to thinking about what you're grateful for when something comes up that may put you in the negative state. And it's the easiest way to get out of that state. And a lot of these principles are uh, that you could read about these um, are related to Stoicism and Stoic principles and really looking at different situations and recognizing them for what they are. And then the main thing from that, and, and this, is, this goes to kind of the spiritual thing too, is a lot of um, things will say just handle what's in your control. So if you're in a situation that you're frustrated or stressed over, have the awareness, and it's going to take practice. Uh, look at the situation. Look at what's in your control. If it's not in your control, then you at least know that you can't really worry. You shouldn't really worry about it. It, it doesn't work for like extreme cases, but um, it, you can take the steps toward that. And it helps it a lot in like the small to medium cases where once you realize you don't have 
there's nothing really you can do, then it becomes easier to stop worrying about it. And a lot of books in, you'll probably see them in the same probably business section as the powerful engagement. It's time management, productivity. Time is the most important thing. This is, suppo <laughs> this is supposed to be Doc from Back to the Future. Um, if I managed my time better, then maybe I would have been able to draw a better version of him. Um, but this, this book talks about how important energy is instead of focusing on um, creating blocks of time. What we can get trapped into is uh, becoming more efficient, creating more time for ourselves, only to fit more work in that we don't really need to be doing. So what you want to do is look at your calendar, look at your day-to-day, -day, and look at things that are draining your energy. If you don't have energy, those blocks of time don't matter. And yeah, it's fair to say, like, if you don't have time, then all the energy in the world doesn't matter. But uh, start with your energy so that you can maximize your time. And remember, you can, let's take this. You can practice deliberately and no longer be in this red zone and you'll learn to recover regularly so that you don't burn out because once you go all the way down to red it stays red forever and well not forever for a few seconds but it takes it takes much longer to recover it's not worth it so remember to take the time to recover manage your energy remember the four uh four parts of it physical mental emotional and spiritual and be grateful i'm grateful for you for listening to this uh thanks and check out my other videos